Right now, winter is here. More snow is coming, but will your street be plowed here in the city of Madison? We find out which streets make the cut. Plus, as the winter weather picks up, we know some of you will end up in the ditch. So what's the message from the people who you can call for help? And we continue our sit down interview with Governor Tony Evers asking if he's planning to send the National Guard to Wisconsin hospitals as the COVID surge continues. News Street Now at 6 begins right now. Well, after going almost the entire month of December without it, Madison finally gets a taste of snow, but it's coming with a one two punch. Crews are already preparing for what could be a messy commute home tomorrow evening. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti now tracking another round of winter weather heading our way. Gary? Eric, this will be similar to what we saw last night. Uh, maybe a little heavier on the snow totals, and there also could be a little bit of freezing precipitation mixed in as well. You can see the snow depth across southern Wisconsin, pretty uniform, about a one to two inch snow depth from the snow that fell last night. The snow right now is up into uh, Canada, moving away from us, but the next weather system will be in at this time tomorrow. High temperatures today in the upper 30s, so we didn't melt a lot of the snow, although it is a slushy wet snow, and it is hard to shovel, even though there might only be a couple of inches out there. Temperatures right now are falling to around the freezing mark here in Madison just below freezing so that slushy snow will freeze overnight and then we have snow on the way for tomorrow maybe mixed with some freezing rain sleet or rain for a time winter weather advisories start at 9 a.m. for much of uh, southern Wisconsin and then run until midnight tomorrow night for areas north of the Dells Tem uh, temperatures will fall to about 20 by early tomorrow morning and then look for a high of 34 tomorrow with that precipitation developing by mid to late morning I'll tell you how much snow we can expect and when it'll arrive in just a few minutes all right, Gary, thank you. you know, the road conditions, always a concern for folks in various neighborhoods. A lot of people wondering how uh, plow crews respond. Did your street get plowed or salted during last night's storm? And that could be true again tomorrow because the city has a specific plan about who gets plowed, and it is a matter of inches. Talil Mohadeen joins us live now to walk us through it. Talil? That's right, Eric. When it snows like it did yesterday, less than three inches, residential streets like this one, the city of Madison leaves untouched. As you can see, this street hasn't been plowed or salted. Instead, they focus their efforts on major roads like those with schools, hospitals, and those used by me Metro Transit. Those areas covers the city's salt route, which is about 800 miles. Eastside business owner Kelly Pulvmacher says she understands the streets division can't salt the entire city, but says they should reconsider when it becomes a safety issue. I'm not asking to go out of the way. I'm not asking, you know, it, it, driving into a big residential area and doing one road. I'm asking one road to be done in between two major pathways, one to a hospital and one to all the shopping centers. She says the road outside her trucking company has had a significant increase in traffic after a COVID testing center opened up nearby. She also says in snowy conditions, more accidents have happened on that road since, which is why she wants it added to the city salt route. Now, city officials did share that should road conditions get to be dangerously icy, they do sometimes employ a sand mixture to kind of manage those streets that they don't salt. But for a pulp mocker, that's reactive and she'd prefer them to be proactive. Eric. Talil, thank you. In these conditions and with more weather coming, as Gary mentioned, the roads could get icy, putting people in ditches. Anna Hansen spoke with the crews. You call for help in those situations today. They're asking you to do your part, too. The first snowfall, everybody forgets how to drive. Adrian Farrell manages tug-away towing and services, dispatching help to around 25 accidents every day. Nights like last night keep his crew busy through the winter. We're getting slide offs, winch outs. Most of all our calls are winch outs in the winter. Tugaway's response time is typically 45 minutes to an hour, but the pandemic isn't doing them any favors. We're not staffed correctly. We're not ready. Uh, people are out sick. And I think that's the biggest thing right now. COVID is hitting us hard. So as much as Pharaoh enjoys helping you out of the ditch, he says he'd like to see fewer people in need of help. Slowing down is a big part of that. If, if you're out there on the roads and you have to be, take it slow. There's nothing more important in your life. The Wisconsin State Patrol agrees. Trooper David Yang says he's been seeing people speeding faster in worse conditions. I would recommend people to uh, slow it down, especially with, it, uh, with their conditions and the weather. So what can drivers do? Prepare. Be sure you have a spare tire, a change of clothes, a phone charger, and some food and water. I would recommend, you know, make sure you have uh, an extra phone charger, make sure your phone is fully charged. Uh, extra pair of clothes just in case if you're stranded out on the interstate. In case it takes longer than an hour to reach you. In Madison, Anna Hansen, News 3 Now. 
Janesville Fire Department says five people are without a home after a fire last night. Firefighters were called out to the home on West Home Street in Janesville just before 530. When crews got to the house, the back side of the two story was engulfed in flames. Four cats were also rescued. Fire Department didn't provide an official cause of that fire, but did rule it accidental. A person living at the house said he reset an electrical breaker several times before smelling smoke. No injuries were reported. Milwaukee police say they've arrested a 19 year old. They say set an apartment complex on fire. That fire left more than 130 people without a home. Happened Sunday morning. The second and third floors of the complex were heavily damaged by both water and smoke. No one was hurt. The Red Cross now helping about 20 people find housing. Still don't know when those folks will be able to go home again. Madison police say they have arrested a man accused of threatening to blow up Madison College on Christmas Eve. A 911 dispatcher got a call from the 42 year old who said he had a bomb. Officers responded and arrested the man on charges of bail jumping and making bomb threats. He was taken to the Dane County Jail. The Princeton Fire Department and Marquette County Sheriff's Office are investigating what caused a mobile home to explode. It happened a little after 1.30 Sunday in the Puckaway Shores. That's near Puckaway Lake. The explosion sent debris flying everywhere. Thankfully, nobody was home when it blew up, so there were no injuries. In a lot of ways, 2021 has felt like crisis after crisis, much like the year before. And as we close out this year, and as Omicron threatens to overwhelm Wisconsin hospitals, Naomi Coles is sitting down with Governor Evers for a look back. They cover it all from the Waukesha tragedy to how he'll respond if Roe v. Wade is overturned. But first, the hospital crisis. I know that there is National Guard right now in the state's mental health facilities, but do you have any plans to send the National Guard into both hospitals and long-term care facilities? Not, not at this time. We, we, we are counting on the federal government here. We have people dying of COVID-19 that don't have to die. We can make a huge effort around getting people uh, vaccinated. So it's not like the, the, the National Guard has all these people hanging around that uh, are, are, are skilled uh, to, to do this work. After the Waukesha tragedy and the investigation into why the man suspected of killing six and injuring dozens more at the city's Christmas parade was out on bail in the first place. Residents are now formally calling on the governor to fire the Milwaukee County District Attorney. Do you have any plans to launch an investigation into Milwaukee County DA John Chisholm? I should be in, in a good position to make that decision whether we do an investigation sometime in the very near future. On the broader topic, do you believe that any change needs to happen to Wisconsin's bail laws? I hate to use a, a tragedy like this to to imp, to create uh, an impetus to change, but if we, everybody sits back and takes a breath, maybe there's a way that uh, that people that have a violent past uh, could have higher bail. I'm 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 open to that. On Roe v. Wade, which could soon be partially or fully overturned by the Supreme Court, Evers says he wants to remove an old state law that could go back into effect banning all abortions. And finally, on a state capitol splintered bitterly between the two parties, Evers says he's rarely talking to Republican leaders, his focus instead on other issues. Whether it's been broadband, whether it's been income taxes, whether it's been funding for our public schools, all those things people kind of outside this bubble that we work in here, actually care about. A lot of Republican messaging right now wants to paint you as a weak governor. They mm -hmm. paint you as someone who can't lead the Democrat Party in Wisconsin. They point to issues like the redistricting maps where Democrats right. splintered over that. What's your message going into 2022? My message is quite simple. We've accomplished a lot. Uh, you know, the fact that some Democrats voted uh, against fair maps, uh, that, that, was, that was more of a, a vote of confusion than leadership. At the Capitol for News 3 Now, I'm Naomi Coles. The governor is promising to fight a proposed constitutional amendment supported by conservatives. They're looking to give the legislature the power to run elections. Governor Evers vetoed six Republican election bills this year. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss ordered an investigation into the 2020 election. So far, only five people in Wisconsin have been charged with election fraud. An audit by the nonpartisan Wisconsin Audit Bureau also did not find any widespread fraud, but it recommended dozens of changes in how elections should be run. Republican leaders in the state are formally involved inviting the governor to give the annual State of the State address in person in February. Both Assembly Speaker Voss and Senate President Chris Kapinga sent a joint letter today. That speech scheduled for February 15th at 7 p.m. Democratic State Senator Lena Taylor interested in being the next mayor of Milwaukee. Just a few days ago, Even Taylor announced she was suspending her campaign for lieutenant lynch. governor. Now she plans to file paperwork to run for the spot left open by Tom Barrett, who recently resigned to become U.S. Ambassador to Luxembourg. Seven other candidates are already in the race to replace Mayor Barrett. 
a primary set for February 15th with the general election scheduled for April 5th. Coming up, two Wisconsinites of internet and music fame are teaming up to help a local nonprofit. Plus, you won't have to isolate quite as long anymore if you do contract COVID-19. The new guidance released today by the CDC. And more local news ahead as COVID tests are getting harder and harder to find in our area. Thousands of people returning home from their holiday celebrations are wondering, when is it really necessary to get a test? That's tonight. Join us for News 3 Now at 10. You're watching Madison's fastest growing newscast. News 3 Now at 6. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette and I'm an actress. Under eye bags and wrinkles are so frustrating. They're so hard to hide and so hard to get rid of. I came across Plexiderm and I was so excited. We have a model, his name is Richie, and all he's doing is taking a small amount. It's so powerful, that's all it takes. This new year, in just 10 minutes, you'll look incredible. This is something that you can do in the convenience of your own home. It's a cream, it's a topical, it literally creates an invisible layer that tightens the skin and smooths it out. All you do is gently rub it underneath your eyes on your fine lines and wrinkles and it visibly disappears in as little as 10 minutes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. It looks even better. I can't even believe that this worked. I was a little skeptical. I am not going to lie because I saw people online with it. And I'm like, yeah, right. That can't possibly work. I'm telling you it really works. I thought I might see a little difference but to see that big of a difference and you know I felt something happening but I had no idea like I have so many dark circles I have the puffiness I have the lines like it's amazing I love it. <laughs> I did this to my father at home because I was skeptical. Yes, I admit it. Four minutes, 34 seconds. The appearance of his under eye bag was completely gone. We were screaming, you have an event. You have any of those moments where you want to feel the best about yourself. I am telling you, the videos that you see on social media and TV are real. This new year is the best time to get Plexiderm for only $14.95 and see it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at plexidermtrial.com or call the number on your screen. Welcome back. The CDC is cutting isolation restrictions for Americans who test positive for COVID-19 and shortening the time that close contacts must quarantine. Now people who get the virus only have to quarantine for five days. That's down from 10. People exposed to the virus can also leave quarantine after five days. The CDC says the changes come as more evidence shows that COVID-19 is most infectious during the two days before and three days after symptoms start. Public Health Madison and Dane County are promoting other COVID-19 testing options as their clinical appointments are completely booked into next week. They published a list of other community testing sites gathered by the Wisconsin Department of Health Services. You can find testing sites near you through the DHS website in Dane County. That includes several pharmacies like Hy-Vee, CVS, and Walgreens. Many of those sites may require appointments ahead of time, so it's best to book an appointment through them. Two famous Wisconsin entertainers will be performing at a benefit concert for Joey's Song. It's a nonprofit that raises money for epilepsy research Research in honor of four-year-old Joey, who passed away a few weeks shy of his fifth birthday. Both legendary Madison musician Butch Vig and comedian Charlie Behrens of Manitowoc Minute will be there. We never know exactly what's going to happen at a Joey's song, but uh, I think that's why we keep coming back, because the surprises are really fun. Well, the next Joey's Song Benefit concert will be Saturday, January 8th. They're hoping to raise a quarter of a million dollars that day alone. Those funds will focus on pediatric and rare epilepsies, two areas underrepresented in the fight against the disease. More to come on News 3 Now at 6, including the search for a woman who delivered an important item to the Dane County Sheriff's Office. Plus, we now know just how many tornadoes have been confirmed from that rare December windstorm two weeks ago. And get those shovels ready. Once again, more snow on the way. Gary will let us know just how much to expect in his full forecast. Fixed. 
No charge. Ah, that's my son. He always takes care of his mama. Ooh, what's up with Granny's casserole? It's for after your Uncle Joe's funeral. My brother didn't have a life insurance policy. I hear there's a collection to help on Adele. Yeah, a funeral costs north of 9000 these days. That's a hefty bill for family to pay if there's no life insurance check to help. Wow, makes you think, doesn't it? Which reminds me, I've been meaning to tell you I got that $9.95 plan from Colonial Pen. I'm on a fixed income, so price is important. The life insurance on TV. Just $9.95 a month to help you pay my funeral expenses. What about your family, son? You've got a wife and kids and a grandson living with you now, too. Maybe I should get the $9.95 plan, too. Thing is, this has been a rough year for my business, Ma. Money's tight. Still, for $9.95 a month, I don't have a good excuse, do I? I'm Jonathan for Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. If you're age 50 to 85, just $9.95 a month buys whole life insurance with guaranteed acceptance. You cannot be turned down for any health reason. There are no health questions. Guaranteed lifetime coverage. Your insurance can never be canceled. Just pay your premiums. Guaranteed lifetime rate lock. Your rate can never increase. It's locked in as soon as you're covered and stays the same for the rest of your life. With guarantees like these, it's no surprise the 995 plan is Colonial Penn's number one most popular whole life insurance. Now don't forget to wear your good suit tonight. And please call about the 995 plan today while it's on your mind, okay? Call now for free information. Call 1-800-505-7613 for free information and your free beneficiary planner. No obligation. 1-800-505-7613. That's 1-800-505-7613. Call now. The gifts have all been opened and the holiday rush is over. Now is the perfect time to get to Steinhoffel's year-end sale for a little me time. During the year-end sale, you'll save 35 to 50% store-wide. On top of that, find clearance specials and closeouts throughout the entire store. If it's a new sofa you want, maybe a new mattress, or a bigger dining set, you need to get to Steinhoffel's year-end sale. Only at Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. The Dane County Sheriff's Office says it's looking to talk to a woman who dropped off a piece of important evidence in a criminal investigation. She dropped off the item at the Stoughton Police Department on December 23rd. Detectives want to identify and speak with a woman who turned in that item. They say they are hoping she will reach out to them in hopes of getting more information that could help in the investigation. The woman, not a person of interest in the crime or associated with the original case in any way. Anyone with information is asked to call Detective William Hendrickson using the number there at the bottom of your screen. We are keeping a close eye on the radar tonight. Another round of winter weather heading our way. Gary joins us now to walk us through the timing of that storm. Gary? Well, Eric, it looks like it'll arrive sometime early to mid-morning tomorrow and last through tomorrow evening. We have an alert day in the forecast for that wintry mix, mainly snow, but there could be some uh, rain or some freezing rain, maybe even a little sleep mixed in. Snow accumulations will probably end up in the one to five inch range with the heaviest amounts north and northwest of Madison, where temperatures will be a little bit colder, and that's where precipitation primarily will stay in the form of snow, whereas the mix potential is a little bit higher farther to the south, and that could limit snowfall amounts. Temperatures are a couple degrees colder. The snowfall amount go up because we see more in the way of snow, especially from Madison southward. If temperatures are a little higher, we might see a little bit less in the way of snow. Again, mainly uh, from Madison to the south, the areas north and west of Madison probably staying somewhere in the three to six inch range, the six inch amounts up towards, say, La Crosse and into parts of central Wisconsin. There also could be a little bit of light uh, freezing rain. Right now, the more uh, significant potential for icing would be over parts of eastern Iowa, but there could be at least some minor ice accumulations across south central Wisconsin. Winter weather advisories, in effect, from much to the state of Wisconsin into parts of Minnesota. Winter storm warnings in effect over uh, parts of far northeastern Minnesota. On uh, future track, you can see how the clouds move in for tonight, but the precipitation by 7 a.m. still across Iowa. Snow and some rain down to the south, but temperatures will be cold enough as the precipitation reaches us. It'll primarily be in the form of snow with that mix of precipitation from Madison southward. Then by 7 p.m., notice how most of the precipitation is already shifting to the north and east. Skies actually clear out for a time late tomorrow night. Then more clouds move 
even on Wednesday as another weather system passes to our south, perhaps bringing us some flurries from late Wednesday afternoon into uh, Wednesday evening, and then cold weather continues for Thursday into the rest of the week. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Of course, we have that uh, snow and mixed potential uh, from tomorrow morning into tomorrow evening, and then we see the seasonably cold weather near normal temperatures through New Year's Eve Friday. That will be followed by the potential for another weather system with accumulating snow on New Year's Day, followed by a shot of very cold air with temperatures close to zero by early on Sunday morning. In fact, future track potential from one of the computer models for New Year's Day and New Year's uh, New Year's Day and New Year's Day night calls for several inches of snow accumulation across southern Wisconsin. Another computer model shows a little more significant snow, especially to our south and west. Of course, this is still four or five days off. We have some time to watch it, but keep in mind that there is the potential for accumulating snow on New Year's uh, Day itself. Now, as we look at current temperatures, Madison was dropped to 31 degrees, but look at these temperatures to the north and west. They're already below zero across North Dakota and parts of Montana. Wind chills running between about 20 and 30 below zero right now, and they could drop to as cold as 45 below zero later on tonight. At least for now, the bulk of the really cold air will stay up to the north. We may get a taste of it after New Year's Day. Winter weather advisories beginning at 9 a.m. for much of southern Wisconsin tomorrow and lasting until midnight tomorrow night for areas north of the Dells. Look for skies to be cloudy tomorrow. It'll be breezy with snow developing. Could be mixed with a little bit of sleet or freezing rain. One to five inches of accumulation by evening. High temperature at 34. On future track, the snow arrives mid-morning. There's noon. You can see it's snowing pretty steadily in most areas, but by 6 p.m. already starting to wind down and then the the snow comes to an end overnight. The snowfall potential, one to three inches most areas, heavier amounts to the north and west, and there could be some minor ice accumulations, especially over southwestern Wisconsin. Seven to ten day forecast. Look for seasonally cold weather for Thursday and Friday. Again, the flurry chance from Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. And then that system on Saturday, windy and cold with accumulating snow potential. That will end on Sunday morning, but look at the low temperatures. Down to near zero by Sunday and Monday morning. High temperatures only in the teens on Sunday, and wind chills perhaps as cold as 20 below zero. Temperatures rebounding back to near normal by the end of next week. All right, Gary, thank you. The National Weather Service says that rare December storm system spawned eight tornadoes across west central Wisconsin. Three EF2, three EF1, and two EF0 tornadoes formed from that December 15th storm. The tornadoes touched down in multiple counties, including Trempolo, Jackson, Eau Claire, and Clark. And COVID-19 related issues are impacting teams all over, especially right here in Wisconsin. We're going to get you caught up next in sports. This three now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. How much money have you wasted trying to find the right shade of foundation to match your skin tone? You end up with so many unused bottles, yet you can't bear to throw them out. Now, there's Color of Beauty self-adjusting foundation, which means you'll never search for the perfect shade again. It's really difficult for me to find a good tone foundation. I usually purchase about three or four and sometimes mix them. Color Beauty is a game changer in finding the right foundation. You put it on your skin and it transforms into your own skin tone. The Color Beauty Foundation is so simple to put on. My skin looks great and it just looks awesome. The key to the innovative Color Beauty formula is tiny color beads that release and blend to perfectly match your skin tone as you apply it. The foundation is white when it comes out of the bottle, but when I begin to apply it, it adjusts to blend perfectly with the color of my skin. My biggest problem area is my cheeks right here. Color Beauty feels really light on my skin and I can tell that it is pretty full coverage so it looks like I don't have too much foundation on but it is covering all my acne scars like I was saying before. I actually really love it. It's weightless and it's full coverage and also it literally just matches my skin as soon as I put it on. It's no work. I've never experienced a foundation like this. Color Beauty only comes in two colors, light and medium. If you have fair skin or you burn easily, go with the light. If you have darker skin, go with the medium. Plus, with an SPF of 50, they're getting the highest level of sun protection in a lightweight formula. And best of all is Color Beauty's exclusive special. Order this New Year's and get 40% off. That means you'll get the color adjusting foundation, the skin smoothing primer, and the fan favorite lash enhancer for thicker, longer looking lashes at 40% off. Plus, get free shipping. Visit color40.com or call the number on your screen. 
Happy holidays from Meineke Car Care Center. We would like to thank you for your business this year and wish you and your family a safe and happy holiday season. Drive safe during all of your travels. Meineke, doing car care right. Snow on the ground is welcome news for area ski hills. Josh Breider is live at Tyrell Basin to tell you what they're doing to make sure you have a great day on the slopes. And an alert day is in the forecast. We'll give you what you need to know for tomorrow morning for 437. The Packers start the week with some roster moves. Four more players are being put on the reserve COVID-19 list, including wide receiver Amari Rogers. Now, hoping to limit the spread, Matt LaFleur says they're looking at how to mitigate risks around the building, and they've even toyed with the idea of going virtual. We're just making sure that we mask up as a team when we're inside and then try to keep people as spread out as possible. Um, we've even contemplating potentially if we get more of these Maybe, you know, going to a, a virtual meetings and then just showing up when we, when we want to get together to go out on the field. Cancellations are sweeping across the state. Marquette men's basketball is the latest team to have that happen. The Big East Conference announced that Marquette's game against St. John's on Wednesday is canceled due to COVID issues within St. John's program. And the Badger women's team is had its game canceled with Purdue on Thursday night after another string of positive cases within Wisconsin's program. The team announced that decision earlier today. This is the second game the Badgers have had to cancel due to COVID-19. Wisconsin is set to play ranked Indiana on January 5th. The Wisconsin women's hockey team isn't wasting any time getting back to work. The Badgers hit the ice this morning for the first practice since going on break, and from the sounds of it, everyone is stoked to be back together. They're also really excited that the focus is solely going to be on hockey right now. Classes don't start up for another couple of weeks, so the top-ranked Badgers are able to hone in on practice and games. As I saw today when we started our practice, uh, you know, the energy level's high, people are excited, and for the next three weeks for us, it's a great time of year because they don't have to worry about school, getting up, going to class, take tests. Uh, they can just be hockey players. To just be able to focus on hockey and training, recovery, eating well, uh, that's something that Mark touched on after practice today, so really just focusing on that will help us a lot. As for the men's team, they are hitting the road for the quick trip holiday faceoff in Milwaukee. The Badgers' first game of the tournament is set for tomorrow night against Yale. It's the first time in 15 seasons the Badgers are playing in Milwaukee, so this provides a huge opportunity for the squad to play on a much larger stage and to see fans outside of the Madtown bubble. You know, there's Wisconsin fans all over the place, and you're, you know, not just a city school, you're a state school. And I think that's really cool. The atmosphere that would be in Milwaukee uh, will be really exciting for all of us, and, you know, for us to get a chance to, you know, show that area, you know, how much we have been looking forward to getting back there is, is a, you know, great thing for us. Gary, I'm going to send it over to you. Well, temperatures are on the cold side now. We've got a little snow on the ground. We're already down to 31 in Madison. Temperatures mainly in the 20s to our north and west. Winter weather advisory start at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning from much of southern Wisconsin. Last until midnight for areas north of the Dells. Most areas uh, it also runs until uh, midnight as well. Snowfall amounts for tomorrow into tomorrow evening. Probably about a 1 to 3 inch snowfall from Madison to the south and east. Maybe heavier in the 4 or 5 inch range up toward the Dells or areas north of there. Uh, future track ice accumulations small. Uh, there could be some minor ice accumulations thanks to some freezing rain. Look for a high temperature tomorrow of 34 though. Most of the precipitation arrives by mid morning. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News for Now at 6. We'll back, be back here tonight at 10.